Breaking news here on YouTube, Blue White Illustrated. I'm Thomas Frank Carr, Sean Fitz, recruiting insider for Blue White Illustrated. We've got some some good news for Penn State football fans. Sean, can you lay it on everybody? What happened for the Nittany Lions today? Penn State is back on the board. Third commit this week. Uh, Kevion Keys, the linebacker from Richmond, Virginia, is in. He announced at a ceremony at his school on Friday morning. Penn State uh, essentially flipped him from North Carolina, who spent a few months committed to North Carolina and uh, got him on campus for the whiteout game and things kind of took off in early December. So a uh, big pickup for Penn State. They did not need a third linebacker, but uh, they decided that Kevion Keys was worth the squeeze. So this they have been after him for a while now, right? I know he was a uh, guy who took an official visit or was here during the summer. So can you take us through the relevant parts of his recruiting timeline with Penn State? Yeah, Penn State offered fairly early. I mean, they, they offer a ton of linebackers in this class, but this is one guy that they identified as an official visit uh, recipient, which that's kind of how we split apart guys that are just guys and guys that are actual targets here. Took an official visit June 24th weekend. Um, You know, going into that trip, you were wondering if Penn State did have space. He made a good impression. I remember talking to some people coming out of that trip. They thought they were going to get him. Uh, Eventually, it would go back and forth between North Carolina. Uh, I think he liked both schools a lot. Uh, He's a little bit closer to North Carolina. Uh, from his home in Richmond, and I believe his dad uh, grew up a uh, Carolina basketball fan, as many do. Um, but uh, this is one that went to the Tar Heels. The first round went to the Tar Heels in August, uh, late August. He committed, and then it seemed like that one was off. Uh, I would say it seemed like it was off the uh, off the wagon there, but you knew when he committed that this, this one would go to signing day. It's just the, the way the feel of the recruitment was. Um, mm. Penn State stayed in contact brought him back for an unofficial visit for the whiteout game in October. And things were really good at that point. Penn state thought they were, they had actually had a chance to flip him quickly after that, but he went back home, thought about it, kept prolonging this recruitment. And you were wondering if he was ever going to get around to telling North Carolina that he didn't want to go there. Uh, as, as I said, liked both schools a lot. Um, but this was a situation where um, it was, going to be hard for him as a, a young man to tell the staff that he had committed to that he didn't want to go there. So as that one got further and further away, Penn State got a little bit less confident. Um, they still thought that they were doing well. He was saying all the right things and things like that, but they got a lot, lot less confident that he would actually go back and decommit from, from North Carolina. They went in a couple of weeks ago and sort of, I don't want to say uh, just laid it all on the line, but was like, hey, if you want a spot, it's not going to be there forever, so you're going to have to do this if you want a spot. A couple of days later, he decommitted from North Carolina, and Penn State has been the leader ever since. Uh, we put in picks shortly thereafter, and by shortly thereafter, I mean, I mean within an hour of him decommitting from North Carolina. Visited Virginia Tech over the weekend. They really weren't a threat. Uh, there was talk about a Florida visit, a Texas A&M visit, but Penn State was able to go in this week and uh, – I believe he wrapped it up at, at his in-home visit on Sunday night with James Franklin and uh, announced on Friday. So normally when we we talk about these players and we talk about them individually, I try to keep it about the individual player, but y- you can't go too far in this class without talking about Penn State getting three linebackers in the same class with Tamir Robinson, Tony Rojas, and now KV on keys. It had been all about TNT this summer and, you know, since then, but now keys is added here in the class. Not that I'm asking, is there a problem with that? Obviously there's not a problem with having more good players, but how do you see this group and this mix working for the Nittany lions? As I said, Penn state fans would take four or five linebackers every year. If you let them, <laughs> uh, this yeah. is a, uh, this is not, uh, this is pretty familiar territory taking a lot of linebackers. Um, but no, it, it fits. I think you've got a couple of different types of players. I think Tamir Robinson, even though we haven't seen him uh, play because of that knee injury, did not play as a senior, is more of a, of a box Mike guy. Um, whereas these other two, and, and it's so funny because the Will position and the Sam position are both out, outside linebacker positions, whatever but they're very different in terms of responsibilities in terms of skill sets and things like yeah. that. But they slot both of these guys in as potential will or Sam you've seen guys move back and forth. Curtis Jacobs moved from Sam to will and did not have as much success as he had at Sam moved back to Sam and he thrived once again. So 
I don't know what the best skill set is. All I'll say is you've got two guys that can play Sam, which requires a more athletic player, requires a guy that, uh, you know, can move and, and get all around the field. So if you've, I would rather have two guys that can play Sam than two. I would rather have two guys that can play Sam and slide to will than two guys that would project as will guys that you could slide to Sam. So if that makes any sense, these are athletes there on the edge. Yeah, you want speed. It comes down to both these guys are super fast. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about some of his, his stuff. Uh, of course, there'll be a film room at bluewhiteillustrated.com. You can get all the recruiting information from Ryan Snyder and, of course, from Sean Fitz. Uh, one last thing that I've noticed, and I want to know kind of from an expert who's been watching and evaluating this much longer than I have, I've really enjoyed Penn State's targeting of defensive ends because, you know, let's talk about these guys um, just to start things off on the film side. Neither of these guys play linebacker. Both these guys are are defensive ends in high school and uh, they are going to project to the next level backwards. Is that a recent thing since Micah Parsons or has that been a plan from Penn State for a while now? And they're just consistently getting these guys at this point of they got all those D line skills and now they're playing four yards off the ball i don't think it's a, a like a plan um but if you look at people forget how different high school football is from a size perspective i mean if you're 6'2 190 uh you are much bigger than a lot of the guys that you play against so you're putting that guy in the position to wreak the most havoc and typically that comes off of the edge um these guys have played in a little bit of space but it's very different i mean it's 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 you can project or excuse me you can play a guy to his projection and he probably won't be as successful and put up the numbers that you need for your high school team to win. Like that's the, that's the thing that we keep forgetting. We talk so much about recruiting. We talk so much about projections and things like that. These guys are also high school football players that the, these coaches and these things want the, and these guys want to win. So mm -hmm. I think that's what it comes down to. I played uh, with a division one running back, but his best aspect was essentially playing safety and wiping away the like half the field. Like he could go and be a linebacker. He could go and be a defensive end, whatever it was. Um, but you put him in the most space possible and he would just do whatever he wanted to do. Cause that's how much better these division one athletes are than regular college or regular high school football players. And I think that's something we forget sometimes. So I think it's more about the best way to project the, or the best way to, uh, expose these guys for their team than projecting them forward. Yeah, I think that that's a really good point. And to to those uh, skills, let's get into it. Let's show you. You saw these highlights already, but we'll go through them. And what we're seeing here is just a guy that I don't know if he ever I, I haven't gotten through everything yet, but uh, he doesn't line up at tight end a lot. Lines up at tight end on this play in particular, but is a receiver for Verena High School. So he's a defensive end and a receiver athleticism is off the charts with uh, KV on keys. He's got great speed. He's got natural bend. I think he's a just in general, everything you're looking at from an athleticism standpoint, he's got it. He's not missing anything. Also a uh, good frame. I think he's got some room to grow. That's going to be the most interesting thing to me. And going back to the conversation about will or Sam, which one of these two guys develops into a box size linebacker, because talking about their skills and talking about, uh, in particular, KV on key skills, really good run defender, excellent pad level, good run defense, smart football player. Any of the positions I've seen him line up, he shows great discipline. He shows great intelligence and he's, he was coached very well in high school. So seeing him play in space a little bit, you know, I, I love all of these things. Wish I saw it more, but that right there, what you just saw on film uh, of him blitzing, it doesn't matter if you line up at Will or Sam in Manny Diaz's system. It doesn't matter if you line up at quarterback, safety, or water boy. You're going to blitz the quarterback. So his ability to chase and his ability to uh, use his hands. That's the part, uh, Fitz, that, that I love about these linebackers that are playing defensive end is not only do they know how to blitz, but they know how to shed tackles. They know how to take on, uh, take on linemen and keep their spacing in their gap. A lot of this stuff you see from uh, Penn State's linebackers because they've learned those skills playing D line and they're just as you said the best athlete on the field how do you cause havoc well you dip around the corner you blitz from depth um, and then of course just the chase speed that KV on keys has uh, will linebacker a good chase position but if you want to run things down and clean clean things up in the flat this is the exciting part is Penn State they've got three linebackers that all played defensive end at one point in their career and uh, and are now playing linebacker so they've got a lot of talent they got a lot of technical 
uh, advantages playing linebacker, and I'm excited to see how all this plays out, just like Penn State fans. And and they still have a lot to learn. You know, let's, let's not beat around the bush here. These guys are not, yeah. I don't think, guys that will come in and play day one, um, especially because you've got guys in front of them that have experience that, uh, you know, are already on the two deep right now at those spots. But they have, um, you know, skills that that can fit, and they check a lot of those boxes that uh, that you're looking for. He's a guy, uh, Keys, going, getting back to Keys, Kind of like Aaron Hansford, um, who played at St. John's College. I went to Texas A&M. Thought he was a receiver, um, but eventually, eventually, I think he ended up uh, in the pros. Or I don't know if he's gotten to the pros yet um, as an outside linebacker. Everybody throughout the process told him he was an outside linebacker. He was convinced he was a receiver. Keys at one point, I think, thought he was a receiver as well. But there's a lot more upside on the defensive side of the ball. So if he becomes the player that Hansford eventually became at uh, Texas A&M, was a pretty good player, and Penn State fans will be pleased with this pickup. Three commits in one week. Uh, good momentum, good juju heading into the early signing period next week. A great reminder, subscribe to Blue White Illustrated, $10 to get all the inside information so that you get the up-to-date stuff from Fitz and from Ryan Snyder. And, of course, Subscribe here to YouTube. That one's free. You can sign up and uh, you won't miss anything if you hit the notification button because there's a whole bunch of stuff coming up, especially if you're listening to this on the day that it's put out. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I know if you watch it on replay, you probably are consuming all of it. So subscribe to Blue Eyed Illustrated on YouTube. And again, $10 for 10 months of access. Getting down towards nine. So your value add. You lose it every time you don't make that decision. Subscribe. That's what I'm trying to say. We will be back with the next breaking news on Blue White Illustrated. <laughs>